Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. As you know, I've been on Iceland with Thomas Heaton, Adam Gibbs and Thor Photography. And what I want to do today is talk about attitude. I want to talk about discovering things that we didn't know were, were there. I want to talk our, about our attitude when we go into the landscape. And I want to talk about understanding time and its, in, and its impact on feel and mood. So it's quite a complicated kind of video, uh, but we're going to try and make this one quite concise as well. So this was day two of our trip. Uh, we got to this location uh, in the evening. And to be honest, we went for a bit of a walk and I found it really quite uninspiring. It wasn't a very interesting place. There was just a boardwalk through a geothermal area. Uh, it was very gray light. It was quite flat and overcast. In fact, it even started to rain. And you know, that was it. I, I don't go into the landscape with expectations. I don't go out to make photographs. And therefore, I wasn't stressed. You know, I wasn't worried about what I was going to do creatively because for me, making photographs is me being inspired to do so. And therefore, if I'm not inspired to do so, it doesn't really matter. So what happened was we had our dinner. We went into our sleeping bags. <clears throat> Excuse me. And woke, I woke up the next morning quite early and I noticed just this beautiful little filtering light coming through the tent. Everyone else was still asleep. Uh, I'm the kind of early riser in the group. So I just decided to pack up, go out. I had my camera bag and my drone. So I started walking up the boardwalk and I had no expectations. I wasn't there to make photographs. I was there with a camera, but it wasn't really, a f I wasn't worried about what I was going to do creatively. What I did start noticing was all the shorebirds that were uh, feeding in the little hot pools. There was a little stint, which is a tiny little shorebird like this. And it was just fascinating to see this thing only a couple of yards away from the boardwalk. There was a red shank and a ring plover. There were snow buntings all around the campsite. So all of a sudden I was kind of in my element with wildlife. And what I found was, as I started to fly the drone over the area, that it was really quite fascinating, just a different perspective when you start to see the colors in the rock surfaces, when you start to see the different pools and the bubbling water and mud and steam, and just seeing it from a different perspective. And what that did was, Oddly enough, it immersed me more in the landscape than perhaps walking around just on the boardwalk did. And I finally uh, started to feel like I wanted to somehow record this with a camera. It's very difficult in super dynamic environments to freeze time and all of a sudden produce something that really represents the experience of being there. You can hear in the film the fizz and the noise and the, the rush of the steam and the bubbling water. All of these things are part of the experience and a single photograph has to be somehow a distillation of many different emotional and physical senses. So what happened was I started making a couple of photographs and you can see the first few are, are, are very representative. You know, there's nothing fancy about them. And you can see in this one that it's um, a 40th of a second. So it's kind of freezing time. Um, and I felt that the image was a little bit flat. I mean, raw files tend to look a bit flat anyway, but it wasn't encapsulating the sense of place for me very much. So, you know, I, I rattled off a couple of frames just to start seeing where I was going. I did then shoot a 16 by nine and I prefer that. I think the expansiveness of that landscape format, the, pa the panoramic format helps to give a sense of space. It gives the steam a journey, a path to move through the frame. Um, and there's some quite nice color in here. You will notice down here, this is an image that I did work. Now, if we look at the raw file, if we just look at those two side by side, you can see I've worked this quite hard, um, but <laughs> there's nothing about my landscape photography that gets 
confined by reality. I, I, I want to express emotions. I want to express my feelings for being there. And I certainly felt very energized and it was a powerful experience for me. And I want the images to represent that as well. Um, if it was all about just representing reality, then, you know, I'd be a photojournalist. But what I want to look at here is I finally found this pool. Now, Thomas Heaton in his video on Wednesday uh, also photographed this pool. And whilst this isn't a competition, it just shows the differences in how our approach can impact the outcome of what it is that we do. Now, it was very windy when I was there. Uh, and as you can see, there's some, this is a six second exposure. And I like the composition. I like the simplicity of it. Now, I didn't use a circular polarizer on mine. I just let the reflected light bounce off it. And for me, it's more like a mirror of mercury. You know, it's this kind of, uh, well, you know me, I'm a bit of a romantic and I, I like visualizing sort of uh, mythology and that type of thing. And I can imagine, you know, a thousand years ago when people were living in these areas, how fascinating it must have been to live surrounded by all this incredible geology and volcanism. So, you know, I'm kind of channeling my inner uh, Nordic uh, his history to try and start thinking about this in a much more romantic sense. Now, I like the flow of the pools. I like the way the water's moving on that pool, but the steam uh, has become too abstract. I think it's become too distorted. The clouds are okay, but uh, again, there's a little bit of texture in them and I don't feel that the six second exposure is summarizing that well for me. So composition is made up of a number of elements. The first is I don't go into the landscape looking for compositions. I go into the landscape to recognize things that interest me and excite me. And I don't think that there was any consciousness in terms of pointing my camera at this. It was a very straightforward thing for me to do. So uh, I didn't fiddle around with the composition very much. It's just pool, steam, mountains, clouds. Now I did drop a three stop graduated filter onto this to darken the sky to create an awful lot more mood. Um, and that's because when I look at the back of my camera, I get that feeling of aesthetics. I like that little rush of, oh yeah, I like that feel uh, when I see the back of the camera. So the first image here, I like the pool. And then the second one, which is a two second exposure. So I was conscious at the time of the aesthetic. Six seconds was too long. Uh, two seconds, I really like the clouds, but you can see that steam was blowing through the frame with a huge amount of velocity. So the shutter speed that you use to find the aesthetics of something has to be a function on how far away it is and how fast it's moving. So I like the clouds with the two second exposure. I liked the water movement with the six second exposure, but I still wasn't happy with the mist. So I took a third exposure, which is a fifth, uh, 0.5 of a second. The 0.5 of a second, I don't like the pool, <laughs> the, the texture I don't like. The clouds have moved somewhat so that the textures are a little bit off to the right and it's becoming a bit dark and light. So it's a bit, it's a bit um, polarized, I suppose. Not polarized, polarized, but bipolarized, if that doesn't sound horrible. But what I really love about this one is the steam. I really like the way the steam is starting to create some textures and patterns. So what I've ended up with, if I look at these three, is I have three different exposures, each with a different shutter speed, so 6, 2 and 0.5 of a second, which are giving the aesthetic in a different part of the image. So what I've done is I've just quickly come through into Adobe Photoshop here and you'll see down here on the right hand side I have three layers. One that says steam, which is for this. The second one is for the clouds and the third one is for the pool. And all I'm going to do with these is blend them together. So what I'm doing here is I'm time blending. I'm shutter speed blending. 
It's a bit like focus stacking, but we're going to do it manually just with some simple masks and a paintbrush. Uh, so it's very, very straightforward. But we just have to make sure one thing is that the images are aligned. And even with shutter speeds or compositions that are taken quite close together, if it's windy, the tripod can just be moving around. I was also on a boardwalk. There was people, there was a, a German couple, I believe, who were coming and talking to me at the same time. A tiny bit of movement means they're not aligned. So we want to make sure that that has happened. With a shift click, so I click the top, hold down the shift key and click the bottom image. I've selected all three. I go into edit auto align layers and that will just make a quick calculation. Now you can see that around the edge here, we've got this little area which is um, empty. And that is because they weren't perfectly aligned. It might only be a two or three pixels, but it's significant because when you start blending layers, if you get uh, things that aren't aligned properly, you get this ghosting and it's awful and it just looks terrible. So what I'm going to do here with my three images aligned, I can now deselect them. If I want to say that the pool, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll stick a black mask on this one. So I'm just going to do uh, hold down the Alt key and click the mask. And that creates a black mask, which will hide the, um, the pool layer. The cloud layer, uh, I know is good. Now I like the base layer. I like the luminosity of the water on the steam layer. So what I'll do is I'll leave the steam layer as my base layer. I will again create a black mask. So with the Alt key and clicking the mask button down there. And I know that this is for the clouds. So I can just grab a white paintbrush. You can see I've got the black on top and the white underneath. So I need to switch that. Best key for that is the X key. And that changes that to a white brush. And this is for the clouds. So I know I've got 100% opacity. I can drop the opacity down to, well, I want 100%. So very quickly, I can just paint in those cool clouds. And as simple as that, we've now got, we've changed the sky. And the way those clouds now interact with the steam, you can see we've now got this opening that that dark mountain can shine through. And I really like that kind of, it's a hole. And I'll use that later in the final processing to kind of give a path for all of this stuff to go through. So finally now, I just need to paint in the pool. Now, I'll just make my brush a little bit smaller using the square bracket key. And again, with a white brush selected and a smallish brush, I can just come in there and paint in the, the nice water that I liked. That is me. I can just go Command S on a Mac, Control S on a PC. This will save the image for me straight back into Adobe Lightroom. Once it's back in Lightroom, I can then start fixing and a few of the other things. So I'll fix the crop. I'll, I'll process it very, very quickly to just get the feel of the image that I'm looking for and hopefully end up with something that's looking kind of cool. So this is the edited TIFF back in Adobe Lightroom and I'm in the develop module. As you can see, there's a little bit of a white line around the corner. So the first thing I just need to do is pull in this crop slightly. Now I think I'll pull it in from the top and the sides slightly. That gets rid of that uh, odd uh, white line situation. Now, this can now be approached in exactly the same way as I would approach any other image. Now, as you know, I'm all about depth, I'm all about atmosphere, I'm all about feel. To make this foreground feel even closer, I'm gonna drag a quick gradient up from the bottom and I'm just going to add some clarity. And you can see instantly that that foreground just starts to get 
a little bit more textured and it feels closer. The second thing I'm going to add to that foreground is some luminosity and that's going to make those white reflected cloud highlights even brighter. And I think I'm going to start looking at the temperature. If I cool it, we're going to get this tiniest touch of coolness in that pool. If I warm it, it's going to get too warm. So I like it a little bit cooler. But what I miss is some of this warmth. So I'm going to come in here just with an adjustment brush and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and magenta back in to this area here. And then we get that feeling that things are just, uh, there's a little bit of a cool to warm transition going on. Now, the, the top, this uh, left hand side of these clouds is a little bit bright in my opinion. So what I'm going to do, I think, is just drag down a gradient and it's going to pull that exposure down a fraction more, take some of the heat out of the highlights. And this also needs cooled somewhat. There was a lovely coolness in those clouds. It was kind of a, a just post dawn coolness in the air, very overcast, very cloudy. And the only real color in the scene was just this kind of volcanic rock that was that was uh, just bringing this kind of fire into the landscape. Um, so I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to add a little bit of texture to these clouds. Now, I've said in the past that clouds shouldn't be gritty and you'll see that I'm using the texture slider as opposed to the clarity slider. I just want them to feel just a little bit more detailed without making them gritty. Um, right, now you'll notice I haven't made a single global adjustment yet. I'm going to darken the overall image because you know me, I like them on the moody side. And I'm going to use, I think, a radial filter here. I'll zero the effect and I'm just going to crank that through the middle. I'm going to invert it. I'm just going to increase the exposure into the middle of the frame there. And that way we're focusing in on the pool and the steam and that kind of looming mountain in the background, even though it's not pointy, it still has a presence about it. And the way we've created that gap with the clouds above and the steam below, it, it feels sinister, it feels distant. Now I could just quickly grab a brush and open up the blacks just a tiny touch. And I mean a tiny touch. There's, we need to make sure that our images don't start to get too dark in places that they shouldn't be too dark. When you use a graduated filter, it's very easy for things that are quite dark. I mean, that mountain was under quite a lot of heavy cloud. It can get to feel too dark, too black, too, uh, too ominous and sinister. I want the darkness to be in the foreground. I want the contrast to be in the foreground and everything else to fall away from it. So I'm going to leave this shot here. I might do a little bit of tinkering with it uh, before the final video goes up. So what you're looking at now is the final photograph, whether I've, uh, if I've done some extra work to it or not. What's important when we are in places like this is that we understand why we're there. I've spoken so many times on this channel over the recent months about our motivations, our intentions, our inspirations, uh, our desire for being in the landscape, what we're there for. And I would hope with an example like this, we, we can realize that it's not about great light. It's not about dramatic landscapes. I mean, this is a, just a simple pool in a very simple landscape. Yes, there's steam blowing about, but equally this could be fog or mist. You know, there's other elements. It could be rain. The, the point is, is that we understand why we're there. I was excited to be there. I was fascinated with the bird life. I was fascinated with the geology. I was fascinated by the changing weather. I was fascinated by the feel of the wind and the rain as it was starting to rain at this point as well. There was a joy to being alive and the photographs are a function of that. I wasn't there to make photographs. I was there to have experience. 
and then the photograph is somehow a manifestation of that experience. It's allowing me to remember, to revisit, to reflect, to look back on my life and say, yes, that was a moment I was alive and I was joyful. If you find this stuff useful, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, stick your comments down below and I'll happily answer any questions that you may have. If you want more in the way of processing videos or other sorts of interaction with me, please consider hitting the join button. And of course, you're supporting the channel also if you look into our eBooks and video series, uh, which is our only real income these days as well. I will see you this time next week when we delve deep into the highlands of Iceland and have a beautiful evening's light uh, where I was just isolating tiny details out of a massive landscape. So please tune in again. And also please check out Adam Gibbs's channel and Thomas Heaton's channel because both of those guys are also producing weekly videos about this trip. And I think the, the, the joy of seeing three different approaches uh, is really educational as well. Thanks for watching. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I get a real buzz out of being here talking to you guys. So thank you very much for watching as always. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.